let's focus on trying to understand what theories, constructs, and operationalizations are and how they all relate to each other. In this figure, this big box here represents a theory. And within the theory, there's different concepts um, and they relate to each other somehow according to the theory. And each concept has a, at least one construct uh, related to them. That would be some psychological uh, set of behaviors that, that go together. And there's different ways to operationalize or measure each construct. Now let's go into detail and see what uh, we mean. And we're going to use an example of social identity theory. And so a theory is a broad description of how several concepts relate to each other. And we can use it to explain why things happen if the theory is supported by data. If it's not supported by data, we just kind of toss it aside and say this is not something worthwhile or useful. But a, a good example of a theory that is quite useful is social identity theory. And social identity theory says that one's behaviors and attitudes towards a person is influenced by one's own group membership. So the way that I think of a person is um, not just based on who they are and their personality and my personality. It's based on my group membership and the group membership of the other person. And we have this tendency to form ideas and behaviors in such a way as to boost our own self-esteem, to feel good about ourselves. And so that's a, that's a broad uh, uh, theory saying that the bunch of different things uh, uh, relate to to each other here. So that's what a, a theory is, is a broad description of how several concepts relate. Now, um, if we go to um, a, a concept, that would be what the parts that are in the, uh, uh, the, the theory. And so we have a, um, a concept here is group membership. And that's seeing myself as a part of a group, so or seeing somebody else as a part of a group. Um, so that would be one of the concepts that's involved in this theory is uh, group membership. Now, the next um, ver thing is a, a construct, and that's a, a variable that describes a specific manifestation of the concept. It varies from one person uh, to a, to another. So it's like a, a variable that, that we're going to uh, be able to measure and my uh, value of that construct will be different than yours. My, the value of that variable for me will be different than the vari variable for you. It depends on the, the person. The example of a construct here is Americanism. That's one measure of group membership. We're all members of lots of different groups. I could think of myself as uh, the as a group of professors, or I'm a Christian. I could see myself as a, a as a, a Christian, someone who follows Christ. Um, I teach at Azusa Pacific. Being a part of the Azusa Pacific is a uh, um, part of is a group that I'm a part of, but they would all be measured by different constructs. So let's choose the uh, the example of Americanism. And so how much do I view myself as an American? And so that, that's, a, um, uh, a me that, that's a specific thing that can be measured by a construct. And by a construct, we mean, okay, well, this Americanism, there's going to be a set of behaviors that go together with Americanism. Like maybe I have American flags uh, on my clothes or in my house. Or maybe when I look for a job, the first place where I look for a job is in America. Or maybe uh, I have an American passport. There's all kinds of things and behaviors and, and uh, characteristics that would be associated with Americanism. So that would be the, the construct. Now, staying within um, uh, uh, social identity theory, there are other uh, uh, concepts that we can measure, like in-groups and out-groups, groups that I'm a member of. We can measure the degree that uh, 
uh, or, or just how many in-groups I feel like I'm a part of, how many out-groups or what out-groups are salient for me. There's all kinds of concepts and I, uh, constructs that are associated with a, with a theory. We're just going to focus on this one uh, uh, concept, group membership, in one specific form, the construct of Americanism. Now, for each construct, there's different operationalizations, and that means there's different ways of measuring it. And even though the construct might be defined real clearly or real broadly, the operationalizations can be extremely different, and they'll be measuring different aspects of that uh, construct. So here's uh, three examples of operationalizing Americanism. Um, example one is that we could use a survey measuring one's belief uh, about American, being American. So um, this is uh, uh, measuring beliefs, things that, that go inside people's heads that they think are, are true. And often we put this on a Likert scale going from strongly disagree, disagree, neither agree nor disagree, agree, and strongly agree. And we could have people identify how strongly do you agree with the statements I feel American, or I'm more at home in America than any other country. I believe in American values. Now, these are measuring different things, but they're all measuring some concept of Americanism. So people aren't going to give the exact same answer for all those. In fact, they might be quite different. But if we have a large uh, a sample, we'll probably get a bell curve uh, somehow. And it might be skewed positively, it might be skewed negative, depending on the, the population that we're sampling from. So that would be one way, it would be a, a survey uh, measuring people's beliefs and attitudes. Now, a second operationalization would be a behavioral observation. We could uh, note how often a person wears an American flag pin or uh, on their lapel, uh, or uh, flies an American flag, and that would that could be a a, a measure of uh, how uh, American they they are. Now we're probably going to get really different scores between the first operationalization, the survey, and the the second one, but that's okay because um, we're we're going to choose the best operationalization for our uh, for for our our definition of of the construct now some of you might be thinking how often they wear a, an american flag on their lapel pin how does that measure americanism but that's uh that's something that a lot of people do especially on the east coast of uh, of america and in fact uh when uh Obama was running for uh, uh, president the first time. He's often criticized for not being very American because he didn't wear an American uh, a lapel pin. Well, he took care of that real easily, and he started wearing an American flag lapel pin. And he was uh, some people started viewing him as being more American because of uh, uh, that. Now, a third example, it's a very different one, is we could say, oh, the, a person is American depending on how much time they spent in the U.S. during their formative years. For example, the percentage of time spent in the United States between the ages of 12 and 19. And that would determine how American people are. Now, this is an interesting thing because we don't, you, we don't think in terms of, life, of this in the United States. But... I lived in France, and my kids were born in France, and in France, they don't give you French nationality just because you're born there. If you're born to foreign parents, like my kids were, because my wife and I both have American nationality, you have to spend your teenage years from 12 to 19 in France, a large portion of it, in France to get French nationality. And so my kids basically stayed in France till they were about 12. And so they, they felt uh, French when they first came, but they went through the real formative years uh, in America, and they definitely feel American and, and don't feel very French. Um, so this, this might be quite a useful way of uh, measuring Americanism, is by the percentage of time spent in the United States between the ages of 12 and 19. So those are three different operationalizations for measuring the construct Americanism, which is 
part of the concept of group membership, which is a key concept in social identity theory. Now, when you're designing a study, usually there's a theory behind what's going on there, um, but there might not be. And sometimes the concepts and the constructs are the same things. The uh, um, You just take a concept and the construct that you have for it, you call it that. Um, it, it depends on how broad the, the concept is, if there's significantly different manifestations of it. But almost all the time, you're going to have different operationalizations of whatever construct you're, uh, uh, you're measuring. There's no one right way to measure organizational commitment. There's lots of different operationalizations of that. There's no one way to, or to, to measure per, perceived organizational support. Now, there's some more common ways of measuring it than others, and the advantage of using the common way is that other people will know what you're doing right away, but there's not a, quote, right way of measuring any uh, one construct. So you'll always have to choose the operationalization that best fits in with how you've defined your construct or your concept.